What's up, family? This is Coach Tom. Most of the time, I'm always talking about basketball, but this time, I'm going to talk about finance. I'm going to talk about how to get out of debt. I'm going to talk about real estate. I'm going to talk about a lot of things that are near and dear to my heart because it's something that wasn't told to me when I was young. It wasn't taught to me, and, and, and it was something I had to learn on my own. And I decided that I wasn't going to be like that. I was going to share some of this knowledge, some ups and downs, and hopefully have you teach me a lot so that I can go on and make myself a better investor um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, just better at everything in, in life in general. So without further ado, I wasn't told much about debt growing up. And so I accumulated a lot of debt as a youngster. And there was one point where I was just mesmerized and overcome with how to get out. And I really had no one to tell me anything. Uh, I talked to a few people and they were like, just pay your bills. And I'm like, I'm paying them, I'm paying them, but nothing is happening. Like I literally owe more every month and that was due to interest rates. And these credit cards were astronomical. I should have never had them. I wasn't responsible. I wasn't ready to, to be able to, 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 to handle them in the right way. So it took me some time. So today I'm going to talk about a couple methods to help you get out of debt. Um, there's two methods. One we call the debt avalanche method. One's called the debt snowball method. And I figure if we start talking about these things, that's the first step into becoming a good investor is that we first must eliminate debt. Um, then there's some other things that we must do and we'll take it step by step. Um, and we'll talk about a lot of other things uh, as well. We'll talk about, we'll break down what t words mean, terminology and finance mean. We'll simplify them so that it becomes a lot easier. Um, I want to be able to do this for my players. I want to be able to do this for my family and my friends. And I want to be able to make sure that they understand what these things mean. We hear them all the time. We hear people say them all the time. And we kind of just ignore them and say, hey, yeah, I know what you mean. But truthfully, you don't. So together on this journey, we're going to try to break it down. We're going to try to make it better. And we're going to try to help you. Remember, I always have a motto. We got us. And the reason why I say that is because when everybody else, everybody else fails you, when everyone else is looking around, remember that the people that really got your back, that are there for you, they will always hold you down. And that's we. And we take care of us. And we do that all the time. So without further ado, let's get into this debt avalanche and debt snowball effect. All right? The debt avalanche method involves making minimum payments on all your outstanding accounts, then using any of the remaining money earmarked for your debts to pay off the bill with the highest interest rate. Using the debt avalanche method will save you the most in interest payments. The debt avalanche method involves making minimum payments on all your outstanding accounts, then using any of the remaining money earmarked for your debts to pay off the bill with the highest interest rate. Using the debt avalanche method will save you the most in interest payments. The debt snowball method involves paying off the smallest debts first to get them out of the way before moving on to the bigger ones. Kind of a tackle the easy jobs first approach. You make a list of all the outstanding amounts you owe in ascending order of size. You target the first one to pay off first putting as much extra money into each payment as you can afford. The others you pay just the minimum on. When the first debt is settled, then you target the next smallest one for the extra payment treatment. The pros to the debt snowball method is that it builds motivation by, motivation by settling debts fast. It's easy to implement. The cons is that it incurs more interest, more expensive overall, and it can take longer to become completely debt free. So in order to create a debt avalanche chart, you must first list all your outstanding debt. Then you arrange the list with the highest interest debt first. And then you continue that process until the debt is gone. So, again, it is not one that makes you feel good from a mental standpoint to watch it, to be able to cut, cut something off your list. But it is the way to, to, to get done the most efficient way to be able to cut your debt down in a faster amount of time. Now, the method that makes you feel the best is the snowball chart, and that's the one that makes you feel that you're cutting something off your list. Your first step is to list all your debts from smallest to largest, okay? Then you make minimum payments on the, all the debts except for the smallest one, and then you pay as much as you can possible on the smallest debt. Um, when that one becomes paid in full, then you cut that one off the list, and you go to the next smallest, and you continue to pay as much as you can to that one until it's gone. And all the other ones, you just make minimums. And that one makes you feel good because it feels like you're accomplishing something. 
But because you're not tackling the largest debt first, you're not being the most efficient. So on this channel, we're talking about finances. We will be talking about stocks. We'll be looking at my portfolio. I will show you right now what my portfolio is for the Robinhood account. I started this Robinhood account from my class that I teach finance in school. And I wanted to show them how we can grow our portfolio in real time and the ups and downs that comes with the market. And last year in 2021 was crazy. I mean, it started off like a bang, finishing off of what was 2020 was. And then we started having corrections and they lasted longer than we expected. And it just was a, a, a funny ride, even though the S&P 500 was amazing. Um, but depending on if you had high risk plays or not, you could have been had your portfolio down 30, 40 percent. And uh, I had some amazing rides and I had some amazing lows. But on this journey, it was great to be able to at least document it in real time and see. So along with teaching you about different ways of cutting debt, uh, growing your retirement funds, growing your portfolios and learning little uh, nuances of the stock market or just in general how to become a better investor in real estate or in stocks. We're going to continue to go through this journey in 2022 and we'll see where it goes. Until the next time, stay healthy, be safe, and remember, we got us.